Hi everyone, I am Dr. Thomas. Recently there has been in the news a lot of talk about the H1N1 virus. And naturally, I know many of you are concerned. I have made this video to help you to understand better this virus and to know what to do to prevent, protect your family from getting it. And in the event that you do get it, to really have a plan of action as to how you should treat this virus. Now the H1N1 virus, like many other flu viruses, is passed from an infected person through your eyes, your mouth and your nose. In most cases, persons have very similar symptoms to what you'd get in a flu virus, such as a headache, fever, joint and muscle pains, coughing, sneezing, diarrhea, vomiting, generalized weakness, loss of appetite. In rare cases, there may be complications, especially if you have an elderly person, a young child, somebody who has a weak immune system, such as a diabetic person, an asthmatic somebody on steroids. These persons may end up with bronchitis, pneumonia. They may even get seizures. Um, these are very, very serious complications, which can result in death. Now, H1N1 virus can be prevented by a number of simple methods. Being a medical doctor, I have to figure out how to protect myself. So I'm going to share with you what are the things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis to protect myself. First and foremost, you have to practice proper hand washing. I also practice not to touch my face, my mouth, and my nose during work hours. I really try very hard to do this. In addition to that, I've found that um, taking supplements are very important, specifically vitamin D. Now, I take about 50,000 units per week, once per week. Additionally, you may take 5,000 per day. If it's a child, between 1 and 2,000 per day or 10,000 units per week is what we recommend. Now, vitamin D is very important to build your immune system. One of the reasons why the flu season is so severe in North America is because during the winter season, they have very little sunlight. And so the vitamin D levels of people in that era plummet seriously. And so does your immune system. Vitamin D is the number one vitamin to boost your immune system and protect you from the flu virus. I've also been doing something for a very long time, and that's drinking green vegetable juices. Now, I've been doing this maybe about three to four times per week in the last few years. There was a time I did it every single day. But I've become a little more moderate and I've found that this has been my number one tool in building my immune system and protecting me from viruses like H1N1. Now I try to use a very simple formula. My favorite is actually cucumber, celery, mixed with pineapple and ginger. There are lots of recipes that you can play around with until you find one that is right for you. But green juice is an excellent way to build your immune system. I've also found that getting regular exercise, sleeping for at least 6 hours per night is very helpful to build my immune system and keep me healthy and strong. In addition to that, I've tried to steer clear of sugar and milk. These are two harmful substances to the immune system and the respiratory tract. It weakens your immune system, it slows your white blood cells down, and it also increases the amount of mucus in your respiratory tract. Now the flu virus loves these conditions. You certainly don't want to make your respiratory tract it will habitable to a flu virus. I've also been doing probiotics. Now, this may be something new to many of you, but probiotics are supplements, and I take something in order of 10 to 20 to 30 billion uh, CFUs per day. And these are important healthy bacteria that form part of your immune system. I also try to consume lots of prebiotic foods, such as my vegetables, my fruits, my nuts, and my seeds to help to build my natural healthy bacteria. In addition, many of you have heard that there is a vaccine and there is a vaccine that protects against H1N1 strain of the flu virus and other flu viruses. Now, I don't personally take a vaccine myself. I don't think I need one. What I do, and I can recommend them for persons who have a high risk of having complications, such as, again, my elderly patients, young kids, especially those over six months persons who are diabetics and who have heart problems. If you're unfortunate enough to get the flu virus, H1N1 specifically, don't panic. There's a lot you can do. First, you need to keep well hydrated. Lots of water, warm teas, soups are excellent ways to keep your body hydrated. Again, you want to avoid sugary drinks and dairy products. This will be counterproductive to you getting better. In addition to this, 
you might want to try taking your supplements at this time your vitamin B specifically and your vitamin C these are very helpful if you do get a fever um, the knee-jerk reaction is to try and get medication to get fever down but we need to understand that fever is your body's natural reaction to try and kill this flu virus if your temperature is below 100 there is no need to rush and try to get medicine allow it to run in children you want to be a little more cautious if your temperature goes above 100 101 certainly you want to sponge back the child maybe give panadols that's quite appropriate in this scenario recently uh, i've been taught a very important formula by one of my naturopathic colleagues he calls it russian penicillin i have been using this and it's very good so i'm going to recommend it to you this is how you make it you need to blend together the following ingredients juice from one orange two slices pineapple a teaspoon of turmeric powder two cloves of garlic half of a small onion about two or three tablespoons of honey and a pinch of cayenne pepper Blend these together and you get a beautiful yellow orange paste about the consistency of porridge. Now you want to store this in an airtight container in your refrigerator. An adult can get about two to three teaspoons three times a day and a child about one to two teaspoons twice a day. This is very effective to relieve pain and clear up the symptoms and help to kill the virus itself. In addition to this, you want to make sure that you rest properly. H1N1 need not be scary for the average person. You have lots of things that you can do at home. I recommend that you try what I've been recommending for myself and for my family. and hope that you all have a productive...